In this video, I'll be adding end users to my CUCM, and I'll also be adding locations and regions, as well as a call manager group, and we'll also configure a device pool. I won't be going through the manual end user configuration, but I will be adding all of these different pieces of documentation to, this, to the description of this video. And these pieces of documentation are extremely informational. There's so much good information in here. I highly recommend reading through them if you want to know anything more about the different things that I'm doing in this video. At this point, I'm going to go back to my CUCM and we want to be on the CM administration webpage. We're going to go under system, LDAP, LDAP system. And for my configuration, I'm going to leave the LDAP server type as well as the LDAP attribute for user ID as the default values. The only thing I'm going to do here is enable synchronization from the LDAP server. We'll click save on that and we're done on this page. Now we'll move forward with adding the Active Directory Sync configuration. Well, again, we'll go under System, LDAP, this time LDAP Directory. If I click Find, you'll see there's nothing here. I'll click Add New. And then for this, because of what we configured on the LDAP side already, I'm going to add this to be AD Sync. And then for this name here, we want it to be, again, what we configured on the LDAP side, UC Sync LDAP and that's going to be at pcanane.com. I'm not sure if this is the right password, so I'll change that. And then now we need to add in our LDAP user search base. And if we go over to our Active Directory users and computers, we can see that our organizational unit that we made is the OU CUCM users, which has agent one, agent two, user one, user two. And that's within the pcanane.com domain. We'll plug in here OU equals OUCUCM users, comma DC equals PCANANE, comma DC equals COM. I don't have any LDAP custom filters or really anything else that would go in here. I'm just going to go down to this point and put in the IP address of my LDAP server. I'm going to leave the LDAP port to the default and I'm not using TLS right now. But as many of you may know, there's a field notice out there where people are going to have to switch over to doing LDAP S. I don't have to do any of that right now, so I'll just go ahead and click save. We get the status update letting us know that the ad was successful. At this point, I can click the button to perform a full sync now. Once it's complete, we can go under user management and user. We should get our users in here. We have agent one, two and user one, two. So now our syncing is set up and working properly. We still have to go through and set up our authentication though. To do so, we'll go under system, LDAP, and this go around, we'll do LDAP authentication. We'll check this box and we'll use the same LDAP manager distinguished name. Let me set the password on this. And we'll use the same search base as well, along with the same IP address. Let's go ahead and click save there. And at this point, we now have LDAP directory sync enabled as well as LDAP authentication. Next, I'm going to add some directory numbers. To do so, we go under call routing, then we go down to directory number. You'll see that I don't have any here. And when we click add new, we can add a range of directory numbers. I'm going to do 1000 to 1009. I'm not going to fill out a whole lot of other stuff right now, we'll just leave them pretty bare. And then let's go back. And let's do another range. This time we'll do 2000 to 2009. And again, we'll leave them very bare. And now we have 20 different directory numbers on the system that we can play around with while we're labbing. There is one thing I wanted to do with these directory numbers when I was adding them, which is I wanted to provide a description. So I deleted all of the directory numbers and I went back and added them this time with a description where I'll have two different sites, SJ for San Jose and RTP for Research Triangle Park. And now with that being said, everything else was left the same as you saw me do it. No partitions, no alerting names, absolutely nothing, just a description. That's the only thing I changed. The next thing I'm going to add is a region. So we'll go under system 
and then we'll go to region information. Where is it? There we go. And then region. The only one that should be here is the default region and it is something that I want to point out right now is that if you go under the help pages and then you go this page, it will tell you about what page you're on and the documentation that I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this video is very good, but sometimes you don't want to have to go search for the, do the documentation and the help pages in the CUCM are, are really surprisingly very good. Also, if you want to see what the different settings are, right here tells you about each setting on the region configuration page. I'm going to go ahead and close that out and we'll click add new. And I'll name this region the San Jose region. Now we'll click add new again. I'll name this the RTP region. Then we'll click save here. And we can see that there's not any region relationships at this moment. For calls that take place within the RTP region, say phone A is in RTP region and so is phone B, we want those to use 64K. Click save here. And then for calls that go between RTP and San Jose, so that we can have a little bit of fun down the road and also develop our understanding of how regions work, I'm going to set that to 8K. Then if we go back, back over here, you'll see for the San Jose region, that region relationship that we made between RTP and San Jose, it carries over. But we still need to make the intra region relationship. We'll set that to 64K, just like we did for calls between RTP and RTP. Now there's something on this page that I'd like to make a point about. Here for the 64K, we see that it says G722 and G711, and next to the 8K BPS, it says G729. Now those are just examples. It doesn't mean that we are locked to those codecs. It, in fact, for this 64K BPS, we can use anything that goes all the way up to this number. And if we take a look here at the list, that means that we can use these codecs, this codec, these ones, these ones as well, all of these up to this point. But we can't use the codecs that use 128 kilobits per second or the 256. So 64 and below. Now for the 8K BPS, for calls between San Jose and RTP, we are limited to 8K. So that means that we can use G729 or GSM HR or G723.1. However, these aren't codecs that really anyone ever talks about or uses th that I've ever seen. So our calls are going to default to using G729. At this point, we can move on from regions and go to locations by going under system location info, location, and there should be three default locations here, hub, none, phantom, and shadow. I recommend leaving them alone. Don't even bother clicking on them. I can't think of any reason that you would want to change these. And whenever anybody has ever changed them, from my experience dealing with those scenarios, it has done nothing but cause problems. For those who are watching and are unfamiliar with what locations are, Let's go back and talk about what regions do. Regions determine how much bandwidth each call can consume. Locations control how much cumulative bandwidth can be consumed. So if you have um, your, your regions set to use G711 or G722, those are going to eat up 64K per call. If you set your location to 180, you're not going to be able to get many calls because each call is going to take up 64K. And two calls alone, that's going to be 128K, right? So you can, you won't even be able to get a third call out of that. With that said, if, if you're at all confused by regions and locations, please let me know down in the comments and we can address it. The documentation goes over it pretty well, but it never hurts to have a conversation about it. We'll go ahead and click new. And I'll make this the San Jose location and I'll just click save 
And once that loads, we'll hit add new again, and we'll make an RTP location, and we'll click save here as well. Now in this area here, links bandwidth between RTP location and adjacent locations, we're going to click add, then we'll select the San Jose location, and I'm going to change this audio bandwidth from unlimited. So we'll select this radio button here. In order to display the relationship between regions and locations, I'm going to set this down to a low value. I'll set it down to 72 and we'll click save here. Now we can see the link between the RTP location and the San Jose location is set to 72. Also, if we go under show advanced, we can take a look at the intra location settings. I'm not going to change any of that. We'll leave it alone. If we go back over here to locations and we take a look at San Jose, you can see that the RTP location is listed with 72. So just like in the regions, when you create relationships, it populates between the two of them. And then on locations for the links, when we made a link between RTP and San Jose, then we came over to look at San Jose, you could see the link was created between San Jose and RTP as well. With the regions and locations done, let's move on to configuring a call manager group. The first thing I want to point out is that if you go under Cisco Unified CM, the servers that we have listed here are the ones which are running the call manager service. Now we'll go under system again, but this time we'll go to Cisco Unified CM group We'll click find and you can see the default. I'm going to copy this and I'm going to move the publisher out of here, but I'm going to send the subscriber A down and I'm going to send the subscriber B down. I'll change this to the San Jose CMG, which is short for call manager group. We'll click save and we'll copy that one. Then we'll do RTP, but I'm going to change this order We'll click save here. And what you'll see now is that for the San Jose phones, they should register to sub A, but for the RTP phones, they should register, register to sub B. That's because sub B is the priority call manager for the RTP call manager group, whereas sub A is the priority call manager for the San Jose call manager group. We'll now move on to configuring device pools by going under system device pool. We should have a default here, but I'm going to create one for San Jose and one for RTP. But first I want to say a little bit about device pools. You could go to each and every device and set them up how they should be, but there may be multiple devices, like say all phones on the 13th floor are going to share a lot of the same configuration. Device pools allow you to basically group configurations that are alike and apply them to a whole section of phones. It just makes configuration easier. So all my San Jose phones are going to share a lot of the same configurations, but my RTP phones will also share a lot of the same configurations, but they'll be different from San Jose. Therefore, I'll make a San Jose device pool and an RTP device pool. While we're here, we'll hit add new, and I'll start with the San Jose device pool, which I'll name it SJDP and I'll make that use the SJ underscore CMG. Then we'll use the default date time group, which is CM local, and the region will be the San Jose region, while the location will be the San Jose location. Now I'll go ahead and click save here. Then I'll copy this to develop the RTP device pool. We'll need to change the call manager group to be RTP underscore CMG. CM local is fine. We'll change this to the RTP region and we'll change this to the RTP location. And now we'll save that. At this point, we are ready to start adding phones and, and registering devices to this CUCM. But this video is reaching beyond the point that I like my videos to be in terms of duration. So I'll end this video here. Don't forget to check out the documentation down in the description of this video if you wanted to learn more about any of these, these things that I've covered in this video. And I've hoped that there's been something of value for you. I'll see you in the next video.